Hey, this is Mr. Leach with Simpson Math. Today we are going to be dividing fractions using fraction strips. Before we start dividing fractions, let's just divide these 12 Sharpies into four equal groups. One way to do that is just to start forming your four groups. There's my four groups. Now let's fill them in with the rest of them. So there you have it. I can split the 12 Sharpies up into four equal groups, putting three into each group. So we can see that four goes into 12 three times, because I can divide four into 12 three equal times. So now let's do this for one and one fifth. In my multiplication video, I started with one times one fifth. This time I'm going to start with one divided by one fifth. How many times does one fifth go into one? Well, we can clearly see that right here, that I have five one-fifths, and so one-fifth goes into one five times. What about one-half and one-fourth? How many times does one-fourth go into one-half? Or how many times can I divide one-half into fourths? Well, let me just look at one of these halves, so we can cover up the others. So, how many fourth goes into one half, well, just two. What about a sixth? How many times does one sixth go into one half, or how many times can I divide one half by one sixth? Well, three equal times. And then we learned in the last video that multiplication is commutative, which means I can just switch them around. Well, can I do that with division? Is division commutative? How many one-halves can I fit into one-sixth? Well, none really. I can't fit a whole one-half into one-sixth. It doesn't work. But what amount of a half can I fit into a sixth? Well, not quite, not a half of a half, but a third of a half. If I cut this one-half into three equal spaces, like we see this one-sixth, is, I can cut this one half into a third of itself, and that would give me one sixth. So that means that one sixth divided by one half is one third. What about one third divided by one twelfth? I'll give you a second to think about it. You can see that this one third can be broken up into four equal units of one twelfth, so that means that one third divided by one twelfth is four. Lastly, what is one half divided by one fifth? So I'm only looking at one of these one halves. I see that I can fit whole one fifth, another one fifth, but I can't quite fit this third one fifth into one half. Well, how much of this one fifth does go in to that one half? Well, it looks about half of it, and it is exactly half. So, another way of thinking about this is that it's two and a half. If you were to write this as an improper fraction, this would be five halves. Because that's one half, second half, third, fourth, fifth, if I was to split these up into halves, like you see with the tenths. Lastly, I want to relate what we've seen with the fraction strips back to our rules of division. Remember, anytime you divide anything, I can turn that division into multiplication. I just have to reciprocate or flip over the second fraction. So, this is the same thing as saying one times 5 over 1. 5 over 1 is just 5, so that's how we end up with just 5. This is the exact same thing as saying 1 half times the reciprocal of 1 fourth, which is 4 over 1. So as we saw in the last video, you just multiply top times top, bottom times bottom. So this is 4 halves, which reduces to just 2. 1 half times 6 over 1, well that's just 6 halves. 6 divided by 2 is 3. 1 sixth times 2 over 1. 
Well, that's 2 over 6, which is 1 third. Notice, again, division is not commutative. 1 third times 12 over 1 is 12 thirds, which reduces to 4. And lastly, 1 half times 5 over 1, which is 5 halves, or 2 and 1 half, you can also write it as a decimal, as 2.5. Now one note about 2.5, this 5 has no relation to this 5. This 5 is actually related to that half, because if I was to write halves as decimals, it's either a point zero or a point five. Common misconception about this number. Hope you learned a few things about dividing fractions.